I know that you're you're anti-war. What is right. your opinion about this conflict with Russia and Ukraine right now? And what do you feel should be done? Well, the conflict isn't really between Russia and Ukraine. It's between NATO and the West and Russia. And Ukraine is a very unfortunate, sacrificial offering uh, to the war policy, which is to destroy Russia, which Biden had made clear and the White House spokesperson had said that really, I think, last December. Um, so the objective was the destruction of Russia. And therefore, when Putin warned about Ukraine joining NATO or having a nuclear weapon or carrying out ethnic cleansing against the Russian speaking population in the East, who had been already being shelled since 2014 when the United States overthrew the government, the Obama Biden administration overthrew the government of Ukraine, um, rather than taking Putin's concerns seriously, or I would say we did take them seriously and we said, oh, here's a roadmap of how we can get Russia to destroy itself. Let's, let's step over every red line do everything we can uh, to force Putin's hand, and we win either way because either he backs down, in which case we just, you know, can allow these people to be slaughtered and we can push Russia back and NATO can expand farther, or he takes action to stop the slaughter of people in eastern Ukraine, in which case we can say, you see that? Russia's the aggressor, they just invaded Ukraine, and then our whole narrative gets unleashed. So it was sort of like checkmate to try and put Russia in a particular position where they had a choice of two very unsatisfactory actions. And mm -hmm. I think Putin did what he, took the action he did because he hoped to be able to actually preempt a war between NATO and Russia, which would be World War III, because it turns out that um, in August of 2021, Zelensky had made it official Ukrainian policy that they were going to take back Crimea by force. And as you probably know, there was a referendum in Crimea, 96% of the people there, it had been part of Russia until 1954. And if you talk to older people in Crimea, they say, yeah, I was born in Russia, then it became Ukraine, now I'm in Russia again, right? So they voted overwhelmingly once the regime that, that we put in place in Ukraine started burning people alive for speaking Russian and um, making Stepan Bandera, a famous Nazi collaborator, into a national hero. They voted to leave overwhelmingly and join the Russian Federation. So Zelensky says, we're going to take this back by force. It's official Ukrainian government policy. So Putin knows if Zelensky decides to take Ukraine by force, take Crimea by force, and Ukraine is a member of NATO, then that's it. NATO and Russia are officially at war. It's over. So I think he thought that by stopping the onslaught in the Donbass, probably hoping that Ukraine would negotiate. And of course, Zelensky tried to negotiate in March, but Boris Johnson flew over there and said, don't you dare negotiate. We'll send you more weapons, just keep fighting. Um, we, at, at any rate, so it hasn't, now it's become a very long protracted and very dangerous situation. And I am very concerned about the US, the British and NATO What's our limit? Are we really going to push this thing over the cliff or stop? And I'm hoping enough Americans are going to speak up to get the Congress to rein in this administration or whatever it is, the intelligence agencies, the people you call the military industrial complex, whatever it is, uh, mm -hmm. that's right. This because it certainly doesn't represent the majority of the American people. It's certainly not. And it certainly isn't helping the Ukrainian people. That's not helping the Russian people. And I think there's a lot of, you know, profit to be made with, with this as well. And um, most Americans that I talk to don't realize the profit uh, value with war. Uh, the companies that make, make so much money off of this, Lockheed Martin, uh, Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, there's a lot of profit 
uh, involved with it. And I feel like it's really scary and I feel like it's dangerous because they're also trying to, in my opinion, I feel like they're trying to escalate tensions with China as well. I feel Absolutely. like when Nancy Pelosi, yeah, when she made that trip to Taiwan, she knew exactly what she was doing. And I'm like, what are they doing? Like, are they crazy? Do they want China and Russia to be mad at us? This is ridiculous. Yes, they are crazy. Yes. And also, look how many, I just read an article. Apparently, there's only two congressmen who put their money into blind trusts when they got in the Congress. Everyone <laughs> else is an insider trading. I mean, it's really unbelievable. I think that's sick. It's sick. So you're just in there to line your pockets. No wonder the American and are legitimately angry at these people. And and see now here's something else that I like to think about because I have a good friend actually Joel Dijon his name is he's running for Congress in uh, Texas. He's an immigrant from Haiti. He's an engineer and he used to work at Texas Instruments and then I think Lockheed Martin or one of these. And he said, you know, I just couldn't stand working there anymore when I realized I was producing missiles that were killing people in Yemen. But I thought, you know, these companies would be exactly the companies that would build high speed rail, would build the nuclear power plants that I want, that would clean up the sewer system in Roxbury, Mass. That, I mean, these people and the technology they have are capable of addressing all of the infrastructure needs we have in the United States right now. So then I thought, well, isn't that even actually more profitable because you're building things and you're not blowing them up. They're actually lasting and continuing to produce wealth in a certain way. And that's where you see that the problem really is one of ideology and culture. Because yes, they want to make a profit. The Congress is really happy to make a profit. But at the top of it, it's, it's worse than that. It's not just about profit. It actually is about the destruction or the power or somehow lording it over other people uh, because really using that technology for the good would be much more profitable over the longer term. Mm. 